This is round two of the training video. It was a short one this week, Thanksgiving week, and I only had two game films to really look at and had some trouble with the signing software, so I hadn't really had a whole lot of time to dive into some films. So it's going to be a short one, but we still have some important things that we want to look at. <clears throat> this first one is going to be a trick play that's similar to one we had a few weeks ago. Uh, same team, actually. If you recall on that one, you had the quarterback kind of walking up to the line like he was calling an audible, going off to the side, and then the ball was snapped. This one's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, it's just going to walk, and then we got a fake, or not a fake, but a snap to the running back. This is different from the one a few weeks ago in that Remember the one a few weeks ago, the tailback was still getting set. You had the quarterback walking really up to the line of scrimmage. So the question about this one is, why does it not fall in the category of deception? There's one play in particular where the quarterback will actually walk all the way to the sideline. If they do that, we want to pop them for deception. This is different in that he's just taking a few steps and then a snap. All that is is a motion. You know, it's not a long drawn out act um, still deception whereas if he walked started walking all the way out here even maybe even past the hash the numbers then we may want to pop him for the deception if they don't run out of play clock but it's just a few steps kind of throws his hand in the air and then we got the snap um, so this is this is legal granted that no other players moving if you have other players moving then this would be illegal. But see, everyone still just takes a few steps. And there you go. It's not a long drawn out act. That's why we don't have deception. So this one, this is actually the very next play. Remember last week we showed you about staying attentive all the way across the goal line. And we had the player who kind of flipped the ball in the air or kind of drop the bar or whatever, right as he crossed the goal line. When we talk about being attentive, making sure you stay focused throughout all of that. Here's another example of why. I'm going to lose the ball right at the goal line. It's hard to tell right here whether he's over or not. The officials on the field ruled that it was a fumble. And... You know, end zone view does not give you anything else, really. But, you can see the players kind of let up. They think it's a touchdown. The defense did the right thing by jumping on the ball. Uh, so, they like said, the officials rule this is a touchdown. I mean, this is a fumble, and then recover by White. See the white hat? I'm going to go ahead and stop the clock because he knows regardless of what happens, we're going to have to stop the clock. So again, this is just stay focused all throughout the play. Don't get caught off guard by something like this. We want to watch the gunner right here at the top of the screen. And kind of follow him throughout the play. All right, so we got a blindside block, possibly. That would that would meet all the criteria of a blindside block. Uh, it's number fifty-five right here. You see, everyone's moving this way. He's gonna cut back and move against the grain. Defender doesn't see it coming. No open hands. He's gonna drop his shoulder and deliver a forceful hit. And this, this hit goes unnoticed by the officiating crew. Someone's got to watch this. Now, the gunner, top of the screen, like I said, he came down through. By the time this play happens, while that is the headlinesman's initial key, by the time this play happens, we've kind of gone into zone keys. So we need someone 
trailing this back. Could be the field judge, could be the line judge, um, maybe the referee. Someone needs to be trailing everything going on back here. Because the runner's here, so you have headlines, we probably got that runner. Side judge is going to take some of these blocks. Someone needs to be watching this area. And then we will pick up a key like that. I have another blown set block right there. This one we picked up. Headlines we picked that up. Let's see if we it. You see this now this one's not one of those where it's gonna cut back and go against the grain. It's just gonna run. Thinner doesn't see it coming. No open hands, gonna drop the shoulder and chuck them. Kinda even hits them over. One of his players laying there on the ground. Which let's go back and look. Uh, probably had a block in the black back right there as well. See right there. Yep, that's probably should have been a block in the back. Because that's remember blocking the back, not really a safety foul, but it is an advantage foul. You can argue the advantage was gained right there. Takes them out of play. And then you get the bonsai block. So we got two fouls really on that play. Let's look, break them down and look. So you would have block in the back of the 50. You enforce that. It takes you back to the 40. The bonsai block. 35, that would take you back to the 50. So it's one of those where the bonsai block is the more egregious of the two. It has a stiffer yardage penalty. Because of the location of that block in the back. You can actually probably take the block in the back. So, two penalties on white. They can only take one of them. So, probably could have been the same official, could have called them both. Oh, you definitely had the blind side block, though. Some people may argue against that block in the back, but I think, I think that should be a block in the back. It's an advantage foul. Definitely takes them out of the play. The runner's right there. If he doesn't get shoved in the back, there's a chance he makes the tackle right there. So, be wary of stuff like that. Watch after the play here. The shove. These are things we got to pick up. Personal fouls after play, late hits, taunting, stuff like that. That's a completely unnecessary hit from the kid who, that's who I think it is. He kind of been jawing all night. Completely unnecessary. Uh, not sure if it was flagged or not. I hope it was. Can't remember. But those are the kind of plays that we really got to. We gotta flag those. So those where you want kinda of wanna make sure you're paying attention all throughout. Never mind, that's not what I thought it was. This is something this is, this is a play from this is not from this past week, but still one I want to look at. Or show you guys for targeting. Watch this guy right here. He's gonna come in and deliver a high hit. Um, we can't tell for sure if that was actually high. We don't have the video for it. But it's pretty close. It looks close. And we do have a flag coming in from the deep guy. Targeting is a safety foul. You know, if you think it's targeting, um, if you kind of have all the indicators, go ahead and throw it. Because we want to get these high hits out of the game. We want these guys to start bringing their target area down to the chest. Really, you want them to aim for the waist because they're always going to miss high. So they aim for the waist, they'll usually hit them in the chest. We don't want them to aim for the chest or higher. Because again, they aim for the chest, they're going to miss high and they're going to get them in the head. 
It's probably what this guy did here. I think he's aiming for the chest. And it's hard because the guys, the receiver's kind of going down. But the onus is on the receiver, or the defender to make his adjustments. So it looks like he kind of came in high of the forearms. And the deep guy does the right thing. I'll go ahead and flag in that. Here's another targeting we want to look at. It's going to be on the quarterback. Um, this one's hard to tell with the video we have. The call was targeting with an ejection. And again, it's hard to tell with the way we have the film. But it looks low right there. Um, then we have the end zone view, which doesn't give us much more to look at. And you see, we do have a wrap up. Now we have been teaching, but the wrap up, you know, wrap up kind of gives the defender some leeway. Wrap up indicates to us that they're trying to tackle. They're making a football pull, a football move. It's when they have the launch and they're not wrapping up or anything, and they're just kind of leading with their head. That's really when we have the targeting. Because that they're indicating that all they're doing is punishing. So if you look here, he got the wrap up. Um, now there may be some incidental helmet to helmet contact with the way his helmet kind of comes up. But I think at the most you may have spearing on this, maybe. And we can't tell. If he's laying down on the crown of his helmet, he gets him in the chest, you can still have spearing or legal helmet contact. Only if the helmet, only if it were helmet to helmet, would you have targeting. Now they call ejection on this as well. I do not think this is an ejection. It's not late. Uh, there's nothing unnecessary about it. And again, I go back to he wraps them up. Again, when they wrap up, it's kind of an indication to us that that is a football move. Um, so I think this is. I can't say whether or not it's nothing because we can't tell. It's hard to tell from here if he's leading with the crown of the helmet. It looks like he may be leading with the crown of the helmet. Definitely looks like he gets some low though. And again, we got the wrap up. So it's definitely not an ejection. I think at the most you could have spearing. But what I want to point to, and it's not it's not late at all. But what I want to point to then is location. Of the hit and then the wrap up that indicates a football move. So let's kind of be cognizant. Let's look for things. Let's look for reasons not to eject, reasons not to flag. All right, obviously, safety fouls if it's close, we want to go ahead and get it. So that referee from his vantage point, if it looked like targeting to him, we want him to go ahead and get that. No problem there. Um, but they did eject this player. And I don't see that there. Not all targetings are ejections. All right, this is not college. Only the flagrant targetings would be ejections. All right, let's look at it's maybe the last one. I can't remember. This is one of those again. Let's to focus about the play and let's look. You know. Not look for. But let's try to prevent things that could cause problems down the road. You got a player running back. He's going to look back at the defender. Give some sort of hand gesture. We can't really tell what he's doing. But either way, this is taunting. With him directly looking at and directly pointing at and maybe saying something. But him doing something directly to this player right here should be an automatic ta taunting. And it was correctly called. By the deep official. He got this. It was a good job by him. Anytime you, you know, single out a player and do a hand gesture or something like that, especially when the play is still going, go ahead and pop that. And that's taunting. 15 yards. Because on down the road, that's going to lead to something else. So, especially in these bigger games, tensions are high. And then playoffs, you got some teams, uh, players senior year, <laughs> they get ejected, no big deal. There's no other game for them to miss. So let's look for things like this and try to keep it out of our game. 
All right, that's it for this week. Like I said, short one, Thanksgiving week. Not a lot of film to look at. Um, to all of you working the quarterfinals this week, congratulations. Stay focused. Work hard. And give these coaches and players the best we got.